Hey guys, it's Mara. Um, in today's video, I kind of want to go over um, my hormone results. I've been on hormones very consistently for like the last six months. And if you haven't already checked out, go watch um, my video I did six months ago on my hormone results when I was only, hmm, when I wasn't really taking hardly anything. So, um, like I said, it's been six months since I got my last hormone test done. That was really before I started a lot of these hormones. Um, the first thing I want to go over is what I am currently taking or what I was actually what I was taking when I got this test done. So I got this test done, um, let's see, the beginning of June. So it's been almost a month, but it, once you get this saliva test sent off, it takes a little bit to get your results back. Um, and I just haven't done the video for a while, so <laughs> there's that. Um, but first thing, um, my doctor put me on, he put me on thyroid medication. Now, um, it is compounded with T3 and T4. Um, it's really a lot more than I think I should be taking. Um, and I even got it checked, um, my levels at Quest. And like my T, what is it, T4 gets converted into T3. Um, my T... T3 gets, uh, whatever, I can't remember. One of them gets converted into the other one. The one that gets converted into the other one, the last, like, metabolite, was, like, super, super high. Like, it was, like, nine. It's supposed to be, like, one. Um, so, obviously, I was taking too much. So, he's cut back on my dose, which I still think is too much, but I digress. Um, I want to talk more specifically about my hormone hormones. Not that that's not exactly a hormone, but anyway. Um, so, I was taking... Um, 200 milligrams of progesterone. I take that at night because it like knocks you out. That's kind of like a sleepy pill. Um, and I was taking, um, so my progesterone, my estrogen. I have an estrogen cream. Um, it is 0.5 milligrams of the estrogen blend. It's like 80-20 of, I think, like E1 and E2, whatever the estrogen is made out of. And then it also had a little bit of DHEA in it. I forget exactly how much, but anyway. Um, so estrogen and DHEA, progesterone, um, my thyroid medication, um, wasn't taking that yet. I feel like I'm missing something. I'll probably think of it later. My brain's not real great lovely you know side effect of not having many hormones or taking hormones I don't know probably both um, but anyway so I got this done like I said beginning of June um, if you see my last video you know all my stuff was pretty much low except um, my testosterone was high um, and all my cortisol levels were okay um, pretty much I have about the same cortisol levels this time as well um, you really want it to peak in the morning and then it kind of goes down throughout the day um, which there's not that much difference from the last time I got done six months ago now there were some big changes um, in estradiol so since I am taking estrogen obviously my estrogen levels should go up um, and on 12 5 so this was almost yeah this was like exactly six months um, it was 0.8 and so on estrogen replacement, um, it says the levels or the range is 0.8 to 12, um, and optimal is 1.3 to 3.3, and premenopausal it says 1.3 to 3.3. So I was at 0.8, which is technically lower than even even premenopausal women, which obviously is not a good thing to be at my age of <laughs> the ripe old age of now 29. Okay. So now that I've been taking this estrogen cream, my level is still only at three. And so he said, you know, he'd really like that level to be a little bit higher. Um, and so I've went from two pumps of my estrogen cream to now three to try to kind of up that a little bit. Um, and my progesterone was at 45. Now I can't remember, my last video has been six months ago. If I was really taking any progesterone, I don't think I was. Um, I don't remember if I was or not. If so, probably not super regular, regularly. Um, but it was only 45, and now my progesterone has gone up to 168, which 
is uh, the range is like 30 to 300 for oral progesterone taking people or uh, premenopausal is 75 to 270 so technically I'm still in the premenopausal range for that too um, so he said he would like to see that higher so now I've gone from just taking 200 milligrams of progesterone to now taking two pills or 400 milligrams of progesterone so I'll get my levels probably checked in about another six months. I'm not sure when he wants me to get them checked again. Um, but the only thing with those both going up kind of at the same rate, my progesterone to E2 estradiol levels um, are exactly the same. So it was 56 um, back on 12 December 5th. Um, and now they're 56 as well. So my estrogen's gone up at the same rate that my progesterone's gone up. So they want you to see, you know, that your progesterone is um, higher, more consecutive. I don't know how to word that. <laughs> my progesterone needs to go up higher compared to my estrogen. Um, and it didn't really. They kind of went up at the same rate. So anyway, it says optimal is 100 to 500 when E2 is 1.3 to 3.3. So mine being at 3, they want my ratio to be 100 to 500, and it's only 56. So we really got to get my progesterone up. That's why I'm taking twice as much progesterone um, as I was, the so 400 milligrams instead of 200. Okay, moving on. Um, before I said my testosterone was high, it was at 63, the range is 16 to 55, um, and that's age dependent. And now my testosterone is 35. So if I go to their little graph they have on here, yeah, that's like a right, is that my, is that my old graph, my new graph? Yeah, um, that's like right in the middle, um, so it's a good... It's a good level of testosterone, and he thinks, and I think too, um, taking these different hormones is helping my PCOS, so I'm um, either converting more testosterone into progesterone, I think that's how it goes, um, or I'm just producing less testosterone in general. Um, so that's why that's lower, um, and that's what I want. So, um, one thing that went down quite a bit was my DHEA, um, which is kind of another um, androgenic hormone. Um, it's not specifically like male, female, but um, it was 8.6 last time. Now it's only 4.8, which is also age dependent. So, it looks like that's within the range. But then if I go to my little graph here... Based on where my age is, my DHEA is actually a little bit low, which I found interesting since my estrogen cream has DHEA in it. You wouldn't think that my DHEA would go down, but I think because I'm making less testosterone, less of it is converting over to DHEA. I think that's how it goes. Anyway, okay, so I've talked about my progesterone. I'm now going to be taking 400 milligrams instead of 200. Um, some new medications that he has put me on is um, Spira, what's it called? Spiro, Spironolactone. Um, it is an anti, like, testosterone medication. It's a water pill. It's a potassium sparing water pill. Um, and I was taking it in the morning. Now, it's 100 milligrams. He wanted me to take it, like, helps with, like, acne and obviously helps lower testosterone. But now my testosterone isn't really as much of an issue, but I still have a lot of acne. Now, when I first started taking it, my face broke out terribly. You know, it's supposed to help with, like, hormonal acne, which is, like, right here, um, especially. But at first it made, I would say, the first, like, week or even two weeks because I've been taking it for maybe, like, three weeks now. The first two weeks, it broke out. It broke me out really bad, um, and it also made me kind of dizzy, which is one of the side effects, um, and peeing a lot. So I didn't really notice the peeing as much, um, but I started taking it at night because I really didn't want to be dizzy at work, and I thought, well, my progesterone makes me dizzy. Let's just take all the dizzy things at once, um, and that seemed to work out pretty decently. The only thing I would say is. Um, Sometimes I do have to go pee in the middle of the night, which I'm not like super keen on. Usually I can go through the night just fine. Um, but at least I'm not like dizzy at work. <laughs> it's like, you know, be careful when operating heavy machinery. And I'm like, Ooh, that's not good. Um, so yeah, I'm taking that at night. They do say to watch your potassium intake. So you can't 
like telling you not to eat bananas and like stuff I like so that kind of sucks so bananas whatever else has potassium in it like potassium um, like salt substitutes which I don't eat that anyway um, but yeah so I'm kind of like eh, do I really want to take this one thing I uh, messaged my doctor to talk about is when you're trying to get pregnant um, they say to stop taking that spirolactone because since it has um, anti-androgenic properties like blocking testosterone it can be harmful to a fetus if you do get pregnant because it uh, blocks those hormones and if the fetus is a male it can you know block its testosterone or whatever so I asked him about that because he wanted me to keep taking that and I'm like well what if I get pregnant like I don't think it's contraindicated as the Google says um, but there is something exciting that I wanted to talk about um, so a lot, I know a lot of women who are trying to conceive um, they start taking Clomid and um, my physician person nurse practitioner whatnot hormone dude um, was saying started talking about um, letrozole and so that's what he prescribed me now it's like um, it's like Clomid in their like estrogen blockers, which I find so interesting that something that blocks estrogen makes you ovulate, but I guess it just helps out that progesterone estrogen ratio. That's the only way I can think it works is by lowering your estrogen and that makes your progesterone to estrogen ratio like go better, like how I want instead of being 56 being, you know, 500 to 100 or whatever. Um, so I thought that was interesting because if I'm on spirolactone still and taking this, it's going to be like, you know, canceling out my testosterone, canceling out my estrogen. All I'm going to have left pretty much is progesterone. Um, so I need to do a little bit more research on that, but he wants me to take it starting on day like nine or 10, um, of my cycle. So I finally did have a period. I went like two months without having one, even taking all these hormones. And he's like, well, basically you should be having a period with taking these hormones I'm like I don't know what to tell you buddy it's you know just ain't working um but so he wants me to start taking on day nine day ten two pills a day and it's two and a half milligrams of this letrozole it's also called Femera which I looked up and because it's like an estrogen blocker um a lot of women get prescribed it for like breast cancer that's like estrogen dependent because it blocks estrogen so you're blocking the growth um of the estrogen dependent cancer breast cancer so um let's see let's see that's my reference ranges um also they make the lab comments at the end which i think is kind of funny um it's kind of like telling me i guess what your doctor should tell you um but it said this is what it says this time estradiol is within the expected observed range with topical estrogen replacement therapy um, so symptoms of estrogen imbalance are minimal. Progesterone is within expected range with oral progesterone supplementation. Oral supplementation results in a more rapid clearance of progesterone with levels usually within the lower limits of the observed range, greater than 12 hours following supplementation. Now most of these um, saliva tests I did about 10 hours after. Um, I last used um, supplement like or my cream or anything like that. It says within 12 to four, 24 hours progesterone levels ha have usually returned to baseline levels seen prior to progesterone supplementation. Or progesterone is usually more effective when used at night just before bed which is when I use it because metabolites formed in the gastrointestinal tract from progesterone allopregnanolone help with sleep which I knew that. Um, in this case, it is best to collect saliva in the morning to allow a 6 to 10 hour time frame from last use of progesterone. I don't know why they wrote that because I did. I had 10 hours. If symptoms of estrogen progesterone imbalance are not um, resolved with oral progesterone therapy, it would be worthwhile to consider changing dosage or mode of delivery, transdermal progesterone instead of oral. If symptoms of estrogen imbalance remain problematic with oral progesterone, it could be worthwhile to consider increasing or decreasing the estrogen level, assuming greater than the optimal range of 1.3 to 3.3, which mine was not greater than that, um, or change the mode of progesterone delivery topical. To achieve an optimal PG to E2 ratio of 100 to 500, note if estradiol is within optimal range, this optimal PG E2 ratio is likely achieved 
during the first eight hours of oral progesterone supplementation. So they're saying um, by by 10 or after 12, it kind of goes back down to baseline. Um, but that progesterone to E2 ratio is best within eight hours because your progesterone, you know, starts metabolizing and breaking down pretty quick, so it goes down. Um, it says testosterone is within normal range, which it was. Um, DHEAS is lower than the expected range with topical DHEA supplementation. Oral DHEA supplementation results in a marked rise in DHEA, uh, DHEAS since, sulf since sulfation occurs prim primarily in the liver. Topical DHEA supplementation bypasses the liver. Um, therefore, while circulating levels of DHEA rise, the levels of DHEAS are likely to increase. Um, and then they basically said your cortisol, cortisol levels are pretty good, um, but symptoms of low cortisol levels are reported. That's like self-reported stuff. They ask me questions like, are you tired in the morning? Do you feel cold? And stuff like that. Um, let's see. They basically said, you know, well, it can show your cortisol levels are fine, but, you know, there can be a lot of reasons why you don't feel like feeling. Um, blah blah blah. Talk about vitamin. So that's about it. Um, I'm interested to see if this uh, Femera works. Letrozole. Um, I did some research on it, and there's supposed to be a lower chance of what is it called? Multiple pregnancies, like duplicates, <laughs> having twins or more, um, than with um, Clomid. Um, and actually, I found a study where they had different women who had infertility issues, and more of them got pregnant on this letrozole than Clomid, and more of them um, didn't have miscarriages. I think out of the group, two women had miscarriages in the Clomid group, um, and in the letrozole group, none of them had miscarriages. But letrozole group, um, like drastically or significantly, had lower... Um, estrogen levels than in the Clomid group. Like it was pretty significant. I don't remember the numbers. If I can find that um, scientific study, I'll put it down below along with linking my last video. Um, so yeah, I really, obviously I'm into the scientific study parts of everything. Um, and I found it really interesting. It was, I don't know, was it like somewhere in England, women, a group of women. Um, but yeah, I think some of them also took um, metformin. And we had talked about metformin, but he didn't end up prescribing me metformin. Um, and I heard it gives you the poop. So, <laughs> you know, if I'm peeing and pooping, like what else is there left? But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions for me, comment down below. Um, my doctor, my physician, my nurse practitioner, my hormone dude, whatever you want to call him, um, does want me to keep track of my estrogen. Um, not estrogen, I don't know why I said that. My ovulation. Um, and so I bought one of these, uh, this kit on Amazon and it's got like a hundred or like I think it's a hundred ovulation sticks and 50 um, HCGs so it's your LH surge is what it detects and that's right before you ovulate so I'm interested to see um, kind of keeping track of that I did it today which um, of my period I'm on day today's the 11th so I'm on day seven I think um, and the line is noticeably less than the control line, which they consider an LH surge if the lines are exactly the same um, or the line is darker than the control line because the surge is stronger. So your test line would be darker than your control line. Um, but I, my last cycle, I kind of tried to check it and I didn't really... When you have PCOS, I think your LH is higher um, more times than not. So you don't really have a surge, and that's the issue with ovulation. Um, so I did have one, I think, that was kind of similar in color, um, but most of the time it was lighter. So, um, yeah, like I said, if you have any more questions, uh, any questions, not any more, but I guess you might have commented on my first video. I don't remember. Um, comment down below, and I will try to answer them to the best of my own research and knowledge but you know talk to your doctor or whatnot um yeah i think that's it and i will see you guys later bye